Next is your flap system. We've got to activate that to switch D because that's our flap switch. Uh, you could also put it to flight mode, but let's keep it simple and put it on D just in case we move flight mode around. Flaps. I set them up where positive value, 44, or greater, or less, whatever, is flaps up. Position 1 would be takeoff, and I like that to be around 0, because that would be like servo center. If it was an aileron, I want my servo center to have the aileron in the neutral position, and when I would deflect the surface up, it would go up, and when I do it down, it would go down. So think about it like that. When the servo is in neutral, it should be at around half flap. So keep it there. Uh, you can, of course, do small adjustments, but let's uh, leave that alone for now. So position two would be your landing all the way down, and we want that to be a negative value. So I'm just going to put it at 50 just for uh, experimenting sake here. Switch D, we did that already. Uh, speed, let's say uh, two second delay on the flaps. So elevator compensation on a King Cat, it requires up elevators. So let's just put in 10 and needs a little bit more, I don't know, let's call it 15 just for uh, experimenting here. So in the servo monitor, try to hold this up where you can see it. You can see my left and right flap, they are moving. I'm in landing mode, take off, or I mean all the way up and take off. And you can watch my elevators, those little bugs, left elevator and right elevator, they're moving as well. So you can see my elevators are working together. Uh, it's very possible, however you built your airplane, that you'll need to reverse one of your elevators. Uh, I believe for sure an elevator will need to be reversed and most likely a flap will need to be reversed just by looking at this, uh, this setup. But because uh, this isn't in an airplane yet, I don't know which one to reverse, so I will leave that up to you. And maybe at a later date I can uh, update the SD card uh, program and re-upload it to the website and you guys can have it corrected. But I think setting dual, I mean setting reversing is uh, pretty important for the modeler to do on their own just to assume some liability. Uh, always check your ailerons before you take off. I hear horror stories all the time of people forgetting and uh, crashing their brand new jet on the first flight. It's sad. So next up is mixing. Here you can do your rudder to aileron elevator, that's typical. Rudder, uh, aileron to rudder, elevator to flap. If you want to do that on a jet, you're more than welcome to. So we're going to go to PMIX 1 and we're going to set up the, uh, the nose wheel steering. So it's going to be a normal mix. That's where it's basically linear and uh, a curve mix would be where you can uh, do like a top hat or some kind of exponential looking thing. Uh, we want a nose wheel steering so it's going to be normal. So we're going to mix very simply rudder uh, to what do we say? Aux 5? Oh, I hear our timer going off. Yeah we said Aux 5. So for experimenting we're just going to set it to 100% but you can set it to negative 100 if you need to, let's see, or you can lower the value if uh, it's got too much steering, there's a lot of different things you can do here, I was looking at the camera while I was scrolling that, uh, offset would be like some kind of trim, you don't need that, uh, I would just use the left trimmer as your nose wheel steering trimmer or sub trim, uh, let's see, Trim links it to this trimmer right here. So leave that off. So that way, this is your rudder trim, and this is your nose wheel steering trim. So that way, the jet 
uh, in flight isn't affected by trimming adjustment you made um, to the nose wheel. All right, so here's a little trick that I've learned. Uh, if you're one of the guys that like to have your nose wheel steering turn off when your gear is up, all you have to do is go to this switch selection and choose your gear switch, which was A, right there. And we need to, so right now, the gear switch is down. And you can see our AUX5 bug is wiggling. When I put the switch up, it stops. So now, the nose wheel steering is inactive in the gear up position. Pretty cool. So that mix is done. Um, next we need to do the actual crow. This is what everyone's been waiting for. Uh, here's the crow mix. You guys have been waiting for it. Uh, we're going into mix two. We're going to use a normal mix. And we're going to select. You can see what we have here. All these selections. But we're going to select flap to left aileron at this point. And I believe we're going to need to use a negative value, but again, I'm not sure. The negative value here controls which way the crow goes, whether it goes down or up. So if right now it were going down, if the ailerons were going down, we would change that to a positive 50. The 50 controls how far up they go. So if you need a half inch of crow and you're only getting a quarter, increase that value. It's pretty simple. We're going to check it here. I went back and I reversed, I believe, the left flap. Um, I did that because I know one needs to be reversed, and I just want to get this right. And uh, so here you can see our flaps are moving opposite direction, which means if you built the airplane uh, symmetrically, meaning output shafts pointed outward, uh, this would be correct. Now we just got to make sure we have the direction correct, which you will do when you build your airplane. Uh, I already showed you where to do the, the uh, servo reversing, so that's no sweat. And we're going to check what we've got going on here. Right now I'm in flaps up mode. Now I'm in mid flap. You can see they went to the center. And uh, then the crow started coming in. See the right aileron moved off of center and the uh, left aileron moved off center. So I'm going to put in right aileron and as you can see, the right aileron is increasing the up travel if I have the directions correct for this program. So by giving right aileron, uh, that puts the right aileron up. So assuming the directions are correct, that means I have the crow value at negative being correct. Again, you'll have to check this out on your own airplane so that the aileron direction is correct and that the crow direction is correct. Always, before you take off, verify the ailerons are not just working, but right stick means the right aileron goes up. Left stick means the left aileron goes up. So don't make that mistake. Let's get out of here continue this on so I can go to bed. Next be sequencer. That's for the gear door sequencer. I'm not getting involved in that right now. Anyways, timer. This is pretty cool, pretty clever. You can have several timers. See it says timer one, timer two, integrated timer. So uh, we've been working on this for uh, oh, this model about an hour. been shooting this video. Um, Granted, there's been some downtime where the transmitter's been on, and I've been messing with the camera, so it doesn't really count. Uh, this transmitter's been in operation for 33 hours. Just a useless fact. So anyways, timer one. Uh, we'll set it for a countdown of, let's say, nine minutes. Start when the throttle stick uh, goes over 25%. You can adjust that, or you can put it on a... Uh, on a, a switch I, if you press that button up on the top, it would start the timer. Anything you could do, you put on the gear switch, 
I've been using throttle stick on a lot of electric stuff and it works on jets too, on turbines. So one time, meaning uh, inhibited. So when the stick goes up and comes back, it, uh, I believe it would stop. Um, you have to check on that. Just read the manual on that. Uh, it's not too important to this video. And then the alarm would be tone, vibe, tone slash vibe, or inhibit. I'll leave it on tone. So the next you could do is a second timer. Yep, wrong button. And do a stopwatch. Countdown. Do a stopwatch. Throttle stick over 25%. One time inhibit. Let's go back and see what all this means. So list. Go back. See, we got a nine minute timer. Throttle stick goes up. It's counting down and counting up. Pretty cool. Bring the stick back. It stops. Clear. Clears it out. Anyways, we'll go back in here. Timer telemetry. We're going to cover this some more later. We showed you in the other menu what some of the features are. Let's cover more later. Monitor. This shows the visual of what all the controls are doing. Uh, that's your first 10 channels. X plus monitor gives your, uh, your second set, your eight. We're using X plus one and X plus two. So X plus 1 is aux 6, X plus 2 is aux 7 on a 12 channel receiver, all 2048 resolution. Let's see, what other features do we have in this radio? That's about it at the moment. Uh, if you like this video, let me know about it, and I'll uh, be a little more ambitious to do some more. Uh, happy flying. Make sure you check your, your throws and directions, and uh, let me know if there's any questions. See ya.